And the worst, the most dangerous thing that Dajjal will have is the psychological deception. Dajjal, the worst, I mean, what's so bad? I mean, we've had many wars before and Muslims have been wiped out in countries and places before. But this Dajjal, he doesn't wipe out or take over the rule or authority or power in the world really by weapons of mass destruction or... You know, all that stuff. He takes it over by the psychological war. And what do we live in today? What kind of wars do you think today are the strongest and most dangerous wars? It's not the wars of blood, the mass destruction. No, it is the ideological wars that we are living now. You could be living in the most peaceful country and through the internet and television, our youth, our Muslim youth are being destroyed mentally psychologically where there is uh, how can I explain it we are now in a time of what we can call uh, something like a, a very complex reverse psychological war reverse psychology mixed with uh, other deceptions you look at the evil and you think it's good and it comes to you with a smile and our youth think it's okay until religion is looked at as a restriction rather than a protection. We're not going to dwell too much on that, but what I do want to let you know is that at the moment, the Dajjal will not come until there are prerequisites. There are certain occurrences that are going to happen before the Dajjal comes out. And this man, a Dajjal, will come out at a time where the world is ready to accept him in his Dajjal, in his deception. We'll find followers. A Dajjal. Rasul Sallallahu called him Al-Masih Al-Dajjal or Al-Masih Al-Dajjal. Why? The word Al-Masih, the one wiped, wiped off. Or because referring to one of his eyes, it looks like it's wiped. It's, the light has gone away from it. It's dark and he can't see with it. One eye he can't see. And it will look like it's flat, like a grape that has its liquid sucked out of it. Al-Masih. And sometimes Al-Masih Al-Dajjal. The Christ, the liar. The Christ, the liar. In the Bible, he's called the Antichrist, or in Judaism, Antichrist. So he is an Antichrist against Isa alayhi salam. Rasul Sallallahu called him the Masih al-Dajjal. The Christ who is the liar, meaning he's not, he's not the real Christ, but he will make people think that he is. This man, al-Masih al-Dajjal, Rasul Sallallahu told us, will cause fitna to all people with everything that Allah has given him of powers. He will make rain come down as he wills wherever he wants it to come. And he'll deny it from the people he doesn't want to have rain. He can revive the land with crops and plantation and he can cause another land to be dead and never have crops and plantation. So no food for its people. And many other such... Uh, you know, powers which Allah has given him in order to test the people as one of the final tests for mankind towards the end of the last time. As for Isa alayhi salam, in order to distinguish him from him, Isa alayhi salam used to heal the blind bi idnillah, and he could raise the dead bi idnillah. Really, like in real. A Dajjal can't do these, but he will be an illusion. He will make it look like. He has risen people from the dead. And I'm going to explain that in a minute, inshallah. He is also called Al-Masih, not only because of the, the eye that looks like it's been wiped off, but also the word Masih in Arabic means that the one who will spread out through the world. He will go everywhere in the world. And it's also true. He will go everywhere in the world. He will reach every place in the world and occupy it except for two places. Mecca and Medina or Tiba or Yathrib as it's called it's got three names it's got several names Al-Masih calls it Al-Masih al-Dajjal calls it Tiba Tiba means Medina and Mecca he will not be able to set foot he will not be able to go into it but he will reach its borders 
and he'll try to deceive the people who are in there. So, Al Masih Al Dajjal, who first came out to say, I am Christ, I am Isa. Al Rasul Sassam describes him as Jadu Shar. He's got very coarse hair. He is a man from the children of Adam. When he comes out, the believers will know him and they will not be deceived by him. He will have three letters on his forehead, Kafara, which means Kufr or Kafar, the hider of the truth or the rejecter of the truth. He will be young in age, he's not old, probably in his mid 30s. He's red skinned, meaning he's more reddish in color when you look at him. He's not tall, he's short, reasonably short, relatively short, but his body is very stocky, it's huge. Like when you look at him and say, well, this is, he is a huge man, but he's very stocky, he's not too tall, he's quite short actually. His skin is coarse as well, and his face looks rough. And his forehead is wide. His forehead is wide. His chest is wide. Wide shoulders. His right eye looks like it's been wiped off, like that grape. The right eye he can't see with, he can only see with his left. And this eye doesn't look like it's poking out, nor does it look like it's hollow. It just looks, as I said, like a dry piece of grape. His left eye has got an extra piece of meat on it. So it looks like it's got a piece of extra meat either underneath or on top of it. So Rasul Sallam describing him in detail here. And the letters on his forehead are not, are either, Rasul Sallam told us, they're either cut, meaning letter by letter, or they're joined. But they mean the same thing. Every Muslim will be able to read it except the kafir. And one of his other descriptions is that he is impotent. He, can, he cannot have children. He cannot have children. Nor does he get married. These are some of his detailed descriptions which the Prophet ﷺ told us about. So Dajjal is not a metaphor. It's not, uh, I mean, some people they say to you, the Dajjal, of, the, the, Dajjal what the Prophet ﷺ is talking about, is the television. The television is it's one eyed and it lies to you. No. Rasul ﷺ gave a particular description because the TV doesn't have coarse hair, right? And it doesn't have two eyes. Okay, and it doesn't have the three letters, kafara. You can play beautiful Quran on the TV if you want. Uh, there is a man at the time of uh, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Just tell you his story. His name was nicknamed Ibn Sayyad, Safi Ibn Sayyad. His name was Safi, son of Sayyad. Has anyone heard about him, Safi Ibn Sayyad? No. But we'll tell you his story. This man, Safi ibn Sayyad, he lived at the time of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he was a young boy who was raised originally from a Jewish family. And he hated the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam immensely. He was grown to hate him a lot. And they used to say that this young boy, Safi ibn Sayyad, he was able to tell you what you're thinking. He had these certain abilities. True story. And it's in the Sahih. It's not something made up. And Rasul Sallallahu heard about him. And he wanted to go one day to find out whether he was really the Dajjal or not. He goes, Umar ibn al-Khattab was with him. And they were going towards the village where Safi ibn Sayyad was. And he was sitting down playing with something when his mother, when Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was trying to come, Amr al-Khattab describes, he says, he's coming from tree to tree. Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is hiding behind the trees, trying to come closer to this boy to try and hear what he's saying. He was saying some things, he wanted to hear him, what he says. As Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam approached Safi very closely, he got very close and started to hear what he's saying. 
Suddenly the boy's mother saw the Prophet and she said, Ya Safi, that's Muhammad. Muhammad's there, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And Safi looked up and stopped talking. He started getting angry. Like that. He hated him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, for no reason. Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, If only his mother didn't see me, I could have listened for a few more words and I would have known whether he is the Dajjal or not. Because people were talking about him being the Dajjal himself.